Welcome back. Now, I realize that in Trump time, the controversy over Haiti and Africa seems like it was months ago. It wasn't. And the reverberations continue to be felt from the president's comments about S-hole or S-house countries, coupled with saying, why would we want more Haitians in this country? The president ended TPS for nearly 60,000 Haitians, meaning they will face deportation. And a few days ago, the president also ended a guest worker program for Haitians who would come to the United States and work in the fields. How do folks in Haiti view all of this? Well, joining me now is, uh, with a little perspective is Jerry Tardou, a member of the lower house of the Haitian parliament. Essentially, he is a congressman. That's our equivalent. Uh, he represents Petwanville district, which is just outside the capital in the hills above Port-au-Prince. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jim, for having me. So. Uh, first, let's get your reaction. When, when you heard the president's remarks, reported remarks, as well as the general comments that he's made about Haiti, what was your reaction? What was the reaction of folks that you were dealing with in Haiti and the Haitian government? Well, about uh, President Trump's uh, alleged remarks, uh, just like all the folks in Haiti, all the people that I've talked to about this remark, I was first a little bit, I'd say, shocked. Not that we are not conscious of the problems that we have to deal with in Haiti, but shocked because these words and remarks came from the leader of the free world, which means uh, the highest personality in the globe, in the planet, whose every word was scrutinized and analyzed and broadcasted everywhere. So, you know, it was shocking in the sense that it came from the president of the United States of America, where Haitian immigrants are doing so well, are thriving when they are given a chance to perform professionally. And two million, maybe three million now, Haitian Americans live in this country and contribute to its greatness and contribute to its prosperity. Haitians are everything but a burden to the American society. They are an asset to this society. And I remember my former professor at Harvard, David and telling me, Haiti is too rich to be poor. By rich, I mean rich in potential, rich in its people, rich in its beaches, rich in its mountains. A country, Jim, cannot be analyzed, cannot be resumed, cannot be described only as one single statistical line in economics or finance. So let's talk about that. By the way, give a little bit more of your background. You uh, you went to Harvard School, correct? Harvard? Yes, I am. I'm a graduate of Harvard, Harvard University. I went. Uh, I did my master's in public administration there. Um, I know the United States uh, very well because I have a lot of friends there. And obviously, as a Congress, um, I have a battle that I'm, I'm fighting in Parliament is the integration of Haitian Americans in uh, the Haitian affairs. So let's talk about it. Give me give us your assessment as to what are the conditions on the ground in Haiti right now? Conditions are not good. You know, Haiti has been poorly led since the 1950s. In other words, we have a long way to go. Haiti is a great country in the sense that it has great potential. Unfortunately, since it has been poorly led, we didn't do the reforms that we had to do. So, so much is still left to be done. But I do believe, and I think that's one positive point that can come out of this whole ordeal, is that now Haitians need to realize that it might be the time for us as some sort of a wake-up call. Haiti has potential, we said it. One other aspect of this impact from the president's remarks is that we've been doing so much efforts in the past to try to change the image of Haiti in the sense that we do hope to put Haiti back on the touristical map. With this remark, it's going to be very, very difficult. Well, let's, let's be honest here. The reality is, is that while well, the president's remarks about, you know, S-hole and S-house refers more to the notion of the structure of Haiti, the areas that are dilapidated or poor or run down, it's really the comment about the character of the people. That's what he was assailing. And when, when the president says, why why do we need more Haitians here? He's questioning again the work ethic, the, 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 the drive, the desire of the Haitian people to succeed. It's really a personal attack. It has nothing to do with infrastructure or even form of government as much as I believe that it has to do with his perception of the Haitian people. And as you pointed out at the beginning, nothing could be further from the truth. The, the Haitians who have come to South Florida have prospered in ways that in some ways the, the untold story has always been that the African-American community 
community in South Florida is often jealous of the success that the Haitian American community has had here. I think so. And whether is whatever his thoughts are about the Haitian people, first and foremost, I think that as the president of the United States of America, behind closed doors or in public, he should be a little bit more careful about his choice of words, as they can either make you or destroy you, and you being a person, a city, a neighborhood, a country, because this is how international affairs work nowadays. Well, let me ask you this, uh, you know, if, if ending TPS, and let's be clear, TPS, the first letter of the T stands for temporary. Mm -hmm. It's envisioned that it's a temporary protected status, Correct. not envisioned that the Haitians would be here forever, mm -hmm. but until conditions of the country resolve itself to where they could go back. What would happen in Haiti if 60,000 people left Florida and the rest of the country and came back to Haiti in one fell swoop? One, the impact in terms of the loss of dollars moving from the United States to Haiti, and two, being able to absorb that number of people. What would be the impact of people actually going back to Haiti in that way? Well, first of all, to the question as of why would we need more Haitians in the United States, I would like to say that, you know, these, there are a lot of stereotypes about Haitians. Haitians thrive in this economy, in this society. They are doctors, they are nurses, they are mechanics, they are professors. They you are mean teachers. they don't all have AIDS as, uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, some have attributed to the president of, saying? Of course not. These alleged remarks are, are false and they are not true and everybody knows that. So I wanted to set the record straight at this level. But about them coming back to Haiti and what would be the impact, it would be difficult because we're dealing with our load of problems and obviously having to have more Haitians uh, in a country where we desperately we are desperately looking for more, jo more jobs, where the economy is not producing enough to, all, to, to, to allow those in Haiti to have a decent job, it would be very, very difficult. And if it's difficult for Haiti, I'm going to say that it might not, the, the repercussions, for, Haiti is only an hour away from Miami by air. Mm -hmm. So we are next door neighbors, basically. And, right. and, 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 and when things don't go well in Haiti, trust me, you feel the impact. You can feel the impact here in the United States of America. Let's take a break here. I want to pick up on that very thought because it's the same issues that are going to be facing El Salvador as well if the Salvadorans are deported back to there as well. But let's take a break here. And when we come back, more of this conversation.